All right, for RCR TV, I'm Sean Kinney, and we're bringing you team coverage of Mobile World Congress Day 2. It's team coverage because it takes a team, folks. There's a lot of news coming out of Barcelona this week. First and foremost, today we heard a big announcement from Google who's going to move into the carrier space, offering their very own proprietary cellular plan. Also got a big keynote address from Tom Wheeler, the chairman of the Federal Communications Commission. He's obviously here uh, explaining some of the nuances of the new uh, Title II regulations as they apply to wired and wireless broadband. Uh, today, I also got a chance to spend some time with Comscope. We do a lot of work with these folks in the HetNet space. They've got a lot of new distributed antenna system products that they were showcasing. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. I'm going to throw it over to our editor-in-chief, Dan Meyer. Dan, what are you watching today? Thanks, Sean. Yeah, well, I'm here uh, in the uh, Denver offices uh, for RCR, not in uh, Barcelona today. But uh, a lot of big news seems to come out of the show uh, in regards to virtualization. I know uh, yesterday I talked quite a bit about some of the big announcements from the carriers, but today uh, it seemed like, again, some more news coming out. Uh, obviously, uh, I think China Mobile announced a new test lab uh, using the OPNFE standard uh, and partnering with uh, Wind River on that, which is a big deal for, for China Mobile. Again, they're one of the more aggressive players in the virtualization space, as, as is Wind River. So a big, uh, big announcement there from the two of them. Uh, Cisco had a couple of announcements uh, with some operators, one with uh, DTE and one with uh, Telecom Italia, uh, basically just expanding Cisco's uh, virtualization platform into some uh, European operators helping them deploy uh, cloud services. Uh, so that'll be, again, interesting to watch that too. Uh, obviously, Cisco is a pretty big company in the IT space. So uh, they're being pretty aggressive in the virtualized world as well. Uh, Hitachi also made an announcement uh, at the launch of their uh, virtual mobile core solution suite, which was a big, big announcement for them. Again, it kind of shows that there are these newer uh, companies who have been in the space for a while, but maybe not the big names when it comes to telecom equipment, but they are tapping into kind of their IT exper uh, experience uh, to kind of come into the virtualized world. So a big announcement there from Hitachi. Uh, also, uh, HP announced a, a deal with Telefonica uh, to be a system integrator for Telefonica's virtualized uh, infrastructure, which is their uh, Unica project, uh, a big announcement for Telefonica. They've been one of the more aggressive players also in Europe in terms of uh, rolling out virtualized uh, platforms uh -huh. in the VN SDN. So uh, HP is going to be a big part of that. Uh, HP, as most know, uh, last year announced that they're going to invest up to a billion dollars in, in uh, virtualization. So uh, a big a big announcement there from HP and Telefonica. So again, again, a lot of good uh, virtualization news coming out of the uh, of the show. Obviously, the Google announcement there, like Sean mentioned, was a pretty big announcement as well. But uh, some, some good news coming out of the event this, uh, event this week. So, Sean, back to you. Yeah, Dan, you mentioned Cisco. I had the opportunity this morning to spend some time with their CEO, uh, John Chambers, as well as their SVP of Service Provider Solutions, Kelly Ahuja. And just the uh, sheer volume of what they put out this week is astonishing. Uh, so large, in fact, that I hadn't had an opportunity to write about it. Any, but if you check back at RCR Wireless, we'll have a lot of that, as well as some multimedia content on the RCR Wireless News YouTube channel. So now let's uh, turn it over to our partner, Joey Jackson. Joey got to spend some time today checking out LTE Broadband. Cast, I believe. Joey, what'd you learn? Uh, actually, Sean, I had a chance to sit down with uh, AT&T Chief Marketing Officer Steve McGraw. He talked about the future of the company. One interesting thing he said was that B2B will soon be AT&T's largest revenue source. He also said connected cars are going to play a big big role in, in the future of the company. A stat that surprised me was that AT&T added 800,000 connected vehicle subscriptions in the fourth quarter of last year. Uh, he he was asked about AT&T's reaction to the recent net neutrality ruling, but he, but he was uh, understandably elusive about it. Um, so those are the highlights. Uh, yeah, I did get to check out some uh, LTE broadcast at Ericsson, and you know, um, they're, they're really pushing that one hard, as well as AT&T. I talked to them as well about it. So we'll keep you up to date as the show continues. All right. It truly is a mobile world Congress, folks. You should see Joey. He's carrying his laptop around speaking on the call in the press room here. It's uh, excellent. Now, uh, we've also got on the line today our Latin American editor, Roberta Prescott. Roberta, I know you've been focusing on a lot of the news coming out of that region. Can you please give us a little update? Hi. Hello. Yes, I'm focused here in mobile world Congress covering Latin America and what carriers or uh, vendors are uh, presenting to them. Today, I had a speak to with a GSMA, which highlights some numbers, interesting numbers related to the region. In 2020, they expect to have uh, LTE coverage covering about 76% of the total population. They also said that since 
2000, between 2012 and 2016, uh, carriers across Latin America has in, have invested $8 billion and mostly in the spectrum license to download, to deploy of the uh, 4G network. So uh, they are really excitement about L LTE expansion across the region and also 700 megahertz auctions to be held this year. I also did interviews with the CDNL and Ruckos of, and both are really expecting the LT growth to boost their business across the region. Very good. Thank you so much, Roberta. You know, I had a chance to sit down with the fellows from uh, 4G Americas yesterday, uh, particularly Jose Otero, who asked about you, by the way. And he put into perspective for me just the rapid expansion of LTE in uh, Latin America. And it really is quite impressive. So thank you for that, Roberta. And now if we could bring in our editor, Martha DeGrasse, for uh, some of the news from her beat. Martha? Thanks, John. Yeah, Joey, I saw your interview with uh, Steve McGraw at AT&T. It was great. And uh, it's interesting, you know, we covered their partnership with, with Microsoft, specifically targeting that B2B segment, um, particularly small and medium businesses. Uh, Microsoft 365 is part of AT&T's new uh, mobile office suite. It's really meant to bring that uh, mobile office, cloud-based mobile office to small and medium businesses so that small businesses can enjoy video collaboration and that one unified number for someone, no matter where they are, they can use that mobile number, whether they're at the office, whether they're at home, um, and even around the world, they were saying. So uh, we thought that was, was a story worth covering. Also thought it was interesting uh, to note that even though it's obviously a Microsoft partnership, it's going to work with, with iOS and Android as well and bringing in Link, Exchange, Windows, and, uh, Excel, Word, all the, all the Microsoft suite. So that was a good one to cover today. I um, also wanted to, to share an update on a story from yesterday, uh, Alcatel Lucent's Wi-Fi Boost. Uh, the company did let me know this morning that Workus Wireless is a uh, good market partner for them in bringing that solution into the enterprise. So we're definitely going to want to be keeping an eye on that as well. Absolutely. I appreciate the heads up. I think Joey and I are going to spend some time with the folks from Alcatel Lucent on uh, Thursday. So we'll be sure to get the latest on that. And, uh, you know, last and certainly not least, let's bring in Kelly Hill for uh, some news in the test and measurement area. Yeah, hi, Sean. Thanks. Um, so, so some interesting numbers have come out in the last week or so from a couple of network monitoring companies. Um, you've got JDSU as well as Newfield Wireless, which is part of Tektronix. And I, I think that some of these numbers really feed into the trends that we're seeing in terms of announcements for things like network optimization. Um, you know, JDSU looked at network uh, hotspots and, uh, and where they're really seeing extreme usage. Um, they analyzed like a 17,000 uh, square kilometer area that they felt was representative of different parts of the network, um, industrial, residential, business, et cetera. And, uh, and, and they categorized 100 extreme hotspots in the network, you know, and looking across uh, about half of those were in residential areas and about a quarter of them were in, industri were in industrial areas. But you even see uh, some hotspots in rural areas, uh, you know, and so they're, you know, using these numbers as, you know, a reminder to the industry that, you know, when you look at network optimization, um, you know, sometimes the network can surprise you in terms of where you actually see usage. And uh, analytics are really becoming a more important part of test. Um, we also saw from Newfield Wireless, um, they've been following the impact of, uh, of the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus on the use of Volti because those two devices are Volti capable. Um, you know, they came out with some numbers in the first two weeks after the launch of those devices saying that they saw a, a steep drop in 3G calling, you know, as iPhone 6 and 6 Plus users adopt in Volti. Um, now, four months later, they're saying, you know, yes, we're definitely still seeing those numbers. Um, and, uh, you know, we're definitely seeing that adoption of Volti, you know, when Volti capable devices are out there, people will use it. Um, so that's, uh, you know, another thing that operators need to keep an eye on in terms of optimization and you know, really making sure those services work. All right. Thanks so much, Kelly. And, and thank you for everybody getting on the call and keeping us updated on Mobile World Congress. Uh, I'll leave it. You know, this is an enormous show. And some of the visuals are just stunning. Uh, that's why I picked the, the service closet here uh, behind me. This is where they uh, take the trash out of the press room. Maybe tomorrow I can come up with something a little better. 
but in the meantime, thanks again, everybody. And please be sure to catch back up with us for Mobile World Congress coverage tomorrow at 6 o'clock. Sean, let's go get to work. <laughs>